everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and we're going to do something a little different. We're not going to talk about a news story. We are going to actually do a little how-to guide. Now, you're looking at this picture right here, and this is a movie library. And movie libraries, I'm sorry, they are cool. They are so much cooler than digital lockers. You can do so much fun things with an actual library. Granted, it takes up a lot of space, but if you are a cinephile, then that is not a huge concern to you. But here's something that some cinephiles don't have. They might have a lot of shelves. They might have a lot of movies. What they don't have is an, a database in which to actually take account for what they have and where it is. And this is actually very important. I personally have several thousand movies. I have actually done vlog videos where I discuss how many movies I have. And people ask, how do you keep track of that? And the answer is a database. I keep a database, an actual Excel sheet product database for, you know, my movies and what I'm going, what I own and where it is. And I'm going to share with you how you make one. Now, I have it in Excel, but we're going to show you how to do this with Google Docs because Google Docs is free and everyone uses it and it's pretty much the same thing with the exception of it's just not as nice. So what are you going to need with the movie database? Well, first of all, you're going to need to have number. You are going to want to know, know exactly how many movies you have and these numbers on the side aren't going to tell you that. I mean, Grant, this is the, probably the least important part of of the database, you can technically skip it if you want, but we're gonna do it for, um, you know, just for completionist sake. So then you do like one, two, three, and then because we have weight, time is valuable, we're gonna stretch it out and make it like that. So these are how many movies you have, and of course, we can do that and shorten it. So the next thing you're gonna need is, well, the most obvious thing. You're gonna need the title. This is the title of the movie, obviously. Very, very important. Then you're gonna want more information. I recommend year, which is the year of the movie. And then you're gonna want like rating. You're gonna want starring. Then you're gonna do director slash creator. Why director slash creator? I will let you will find out in a moment. Then format, because this is gonna be important whether you do digital, physical, or a little bit of both. And then I'm gonna throw in a couple oddball ones and they're not gonna make a whole lot of sense now, but I will explain in a minute. I'm gonna put Oscar and I'm gonna put Criterion. Now, why have I put those there? We will, um, explain why mail. So now, look, that's basically how you get your movie database started. Now, what you need to do, you need to actually start putting movies in the database. So let's do three just to kind of let you know what it's like. So here we have the first one. We have Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Um, this is, you know, Disney movie, you know, fairly popular. You've probably heard of it. And we're going to put that in. So I start with the title, Pirates of of the Caribbean, let's see here, on Stranger Tides. All right, and as these get longer, you will want to make them, you know, actually just for, just because you want a little bit of space, let's just do that, okay? Let's go to the year. So this, what year is this? This was 2011, it appears. And the movie is rated PG-13. It's starring, now when it comes to starring, you can do however you want it to be. Personally, what I like to do is any actor whose name is above the title, I will put in the starring box. If there's someone who is not credited or there's no one whose name is over the, over the title, we'll just leave it blank. Now, my dad does it a little differently. He does like the top two or three people because he doesn't want it to be super long, which some of mine are. But we're going to do it my way because this is my video. This movie is starring Johnny Depp, um, Penelope Cruz, Ian McShane, and Je oops, Jeffrey Rush. The director of this movie, I believe it was, I believe this was Rob Marshall. Yes, 
The director of this movie is Rob Marshall, who frankly has not had much of a career since Chicago, sorry to say. Now this format is Blu-ray 3D. Blu-ray 3D. And the Oscar and Criterion, we will leave blank for the time being. Now one of the things that I want to do at this point is I want to, you know, I, I want to make this a little standardized. So let's center this. Um, this will also be centered. The starring and director creator will not be centered. However, what we will do is we'll we'll do some something else. We will uh, where where is it? Um, Format, align, middle. That is what we'll do. We will do this. The director and the creator will be middled. And the reason you want to do the director and the creator middled is because they're the only ones that's going to have this. Well, actually, no. We want to do all of these middled now that I think about it. So format, align, middle. And in some cases... We will have them centered. This is all very important. This is the only one that we won't center or middle at all because the actors are frankly what's going to be the one that causes the problems for these things. So then, let's go to the second one. We've got Pirates of the Caribbean done. Let's do a TV show next. Let's do Game of Thrones Season 8. So... Um, we are going to do Game of Thrones se Season 8. And by the way, if you're, I always do it like zero number because if the, se the show has like more than 10 seasons, that's the way to keep the seasons in order. This is a 2019 thing. Now, this does not have a movie rating, but it has a TV rating. So that's TVMA. Now, this is one of those cases where there's technically no one above the title. So I'm going to leave this blank even though... Peter Dinklage and Kit Carrington are technically the stars. Amelia Clark as well. Uh, creator, let's say George R. R. Martin. I know tech. I know it was. Um, he wasn't the real creator of the show, but you know what the heck. And this is an ultra HD format. Now here's why we're going to include these extra spots. Let's look at something like this. Swing time. This is a Criterion Collection. Blu-ray. And by the way, the Criterion Collection is one of my favorite movie collections of in the entire world. One of my bucket lists is to have an entire set of this collection. If you want to help out, my Criterion wish list is below. Just saying. You don't have to do that, actually. But here's the thing. The Criterion Collection is also um, organized in a unique way. If you are a huge Criterion fan, you are going to... Um, you're, you're going to put these on the shelf numerically. Because the Criterion Collection has spine numbers on the spine in the order they released so let's show what's going on you go swing time here this is 1936 and this was directed by who, who was this direct, directed by this was directed by oh well first of all this is not rated so that's not rated but we're going to do that we are going to do Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. This is George Stevens, and you saw that it was automatically filling in the blanks, if you will. Obviously, George R. R. Martin did not make this. However, if he made another season, you could press George R., and then it would fill in the rest and save you some time. This is a Blu-ray, just a Blu-ray. Now then... This is criterion number 979. So what this section is doing is this is providing me with, like, okay, this is not only on the criterion shelf, this is the number you go to find it. Now then, here's the thing. When it comes to Oscars, you can do a few things. Like, let's uh, pick, let's pick um, this one. Like, I'm just looking at it. Let's last... 
Emperor. This is 1987. I just remember this on the top of my head. It's PG-13. And it was directed by Bernardo Bertolucci. I'm sorry if I misspelled that. It's Blu-ray. This is Oscar because I have a shelf for the Oscar movies. Now, you can do either the X or you can do whatever num year number it was. I think that's pointless, though, in this case because I know it won an Oscar. It was 1987. That means that's roughly the... But here's the other thing. Last Emperor is also a Criterion Collection. So that would be 422. 422. So there you go. Now then, there is a section that I did not put on here at first because it's not a section that I particularly use because I memorize it, but it's something you might want to add just in case. And that is di digital. Because a lot of movies come with digital copies and you want to, and there's multiple services out there, so you might need to keep track of that. So let's create this. And I know some of these movies have digital copies. So I have Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Things. Um, let's see here. That is mo movies and anywhere. Movies anywhere. That's where Pirates of the Caribbean is. Now, I do have Game of Thrones Season 8. That is on Voodoo. Swing Time, that's not on anything. There was no digital copy. Now, The Last Emperor, I actually bought digitally separately. That is iTunes. Sorry iTunes. I didn't correct it. And so that will help me if I have it digitally, then there you go. Now, in some instances, you might have a movie that you only have digitally. So for example, one of the movies that I have that's only digital is Super Size Me 2, Holy Chicken. That's a 2019 movie. It's PG-13 by Morgan Spurlock. Also by Morgan Spur Spurlock. That I post as digital. And so when you go over there, that would be on Voodoo. I don't know why that didn't fill it in, but there you go. So you can, as you can see, you can kind of play around with it however you want. This will go a long way. In fact, you know what? Let's let's do the this just to make it more consistent there. Let's do that, that better and make this small. There we go. And so that is the start of your um, movie database. Now I'm going to show you what my movie database looks like right now. I did it a while ago, so it looks a little different. But as you can see, you have the title, year, the rating, starring, director, series creator. I call that series creator on this one in format, Oscar, and Criterion. And, you know, as you can see, this is what it looks like when it's fully grown. We have Blu-ray, DVD, Blu-ray 3D, Ultra HD. Um, you have, uh, I know I have more formats than that. There's an HD DVD right there for the Ant Bully. <laughs> bully. Um, you know, you see a couple of Criterion sitting next to one another. You see a bunch of ratings. Like, look, see what happens when you put, like, all the actors that are above the title, sometimes those get really, really long and they take up like a huge chunk of the database. And, you know, sometimes sometimes you'll see things that look like they're... I have a lot of bat, Batman. Sometimes you'll see things that look a little um, duplicate, like you have a Beauty and the Beast here and a Beauty and the Beast here. This is the animated movie. This is the French movie. And this is unfortunately a live action movie, which I wish I didn't own, but you know, I'm a huge fan of 3D. Now you might notice here, Battle of the Sexes, I put UV because when I started doing this database, what I did was everything was ultraviolet at that point for me. So I just put ultraviolet. Now I have multiple different digital services now, so I probably should add a digital um, ca column to show where it is, but the thing is, I frankly don't watch digital that often. I usually watch physical when possible. So it's not that important to me, and I kind of can remember where it is. Like if it's Disney, it's probably movies anywhere. And the only time I buy things digitally is through iTunes and Vudu, and those sync up with one another these days anyway. So, you know, if it's not on one thing, it's on the other. I don't think it's that important, but again, 
I know for a lot of people this is important. So anyway, this is just like a really good way to keep track of your collection. Now, there is one more thing I'm going to add over here. And this one might be important, but I recommend a separate sheet for this. But it's a, le it's a lend column. So if you lend your movies out to people, uh, these are just random names. Um, I, I'm not saying I've actually lent these to anyone. Then, well, here's the thing. You will want to keep track of who you're lending your movies to. Now, this, again, is not something that happens too often. Most people stream stuff now. So I've kind of realized, like, people don't ask to borrow things. People bar borrow things from me all the time way back in the day. Not so much. So this might not be necessary. However, if you lend out your movies for a good period of time, you might want to consider going down this option. Otherwise, this is how you create it. And you can do this with Excel. You can do it with any any sort of spreadsheet program it's really simple it's free and it's easy and honestly it's kind of fun like when you have like so many movies that you feel like you need a database that you first start doing this it actually can be quite fun to just start putting things in and watching it grow and then before you know it you've got a database and you're going down hundreds and hundreds of movies and it's just insane so anyway that's where we're gonna leave this one but what do you folks think do you will you ever need a movie database do you think uh did this help at all i would love to know comment below like favorite share subscribe and as always flame responsibly have a good one